Joining us now from the Daily Face-Off, the Frankly Speaking podcast, NHL insider representing the blue jean-wearing people of Edmonton, Mr. Frank Saravelli. I got to get paid a lot more for that. Joins That's going to be the case. Joins, joins a couple of douches here in Vancouver. Took the words out of my mouth. Like, <laughs> you want to show them how rich we are? Huh? Oh, man. In the of your house? I would love to borrow a fiver if I could. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. What the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> All in good fun is what I would say. It wasn't yes. taken as good fun here. We got some really sore butts here, including one in the producer's booth. Well, but Grady always has one, so that's, that's okay. True. That's true. Um, yeah, hey, I spent a you ton of time it. in Vancouver, and I loved it. I'm just more making fun of some of the uh, the Tesla, Porsche, whatever crowd that you see driving mm -hmm. around that live in very fancy places. You that know how are, expensive the F-150s are now? They're the same that, price as those cars. Well, yeah, well, that that too. The uh, the I, it's just a different vibe. That's all. Yes, it is a different vibe. Have you not encountered the Alberta oil money yet? I, I realize it's more pronounced in Calgary than Edmonton, but like those guys wipe their ass with hundred dollar bills. Well, that's the funny thing though, but they don't feel the need to tell you or mm -hmm. show you. And I think that's the difference. That was the quote douche factor. If we're being honest, right. There's something about having money and not flaunting it. Whereas in Vancouver, it just seems to be right in front of you, slapping you in the face whatever Isn't street corner you turn on uh, have you not been to like la new york san francisco well, like all i have but i'm have consider where i'm from it's always in your face yeah I, I i don't live in any of those places oh, so i it's that's just not what i'm used to so you're telling me philly's come a long way from the randolph and mortimer years of trading places back in the day it's yeah it says blue collar union labor a city as you can come from Okay. We also can't have it both ways. We talk about all the time how the Duponts are from Philly. Are they not from Delaware? Actually, oh. we talk about it all the time how there's no traffic on Fridays because people just don't work here on Fridays. Yeah. Uh, we talk about how rush hour is at three because people leave work every day early mm -hmm. here. So we can't have it both ways. Folks. And the every man is being squeezed out in van. It's just it's the every man is being squeezed out in pro mm -hmm. sports just about everywhere, Frank. Mm -hmm. It is really, yeah. really sad when you look at ticket prices now and who can and can't afford. That's that's who I am, though. Like, not for nothing. Like, one half of my family works in construction. And if I wasn't a hockey reporter, I'd be standing over a ditch watching water mains mm -hmm. and putting in water mains. If I was, you know, the other side of my family, I'd be a police officer. Like, that's just what we are. So I'm not uh, just don't I'm not making fun of anyone. If you the, the every man, that's that's what I'm from, though. And I did see you. You took it back a little bit or you mea couple on your show. Yeah, it wasn't intended to be a dig or or I hate Vancouver or anything like nothing like that at all. It was just a pure comparison of the two cities. Mm. And also like a pure radio clip, if there ever was one, like yeah. <laughs> Laddie Schmid was, was helping lead the charge in terms of his distaste for the Vancouver market. And I just happened to pile on. Yeah. Also 10 years Blame ago, that, 10 years ago that no one would have heard that, but now yeah. sound goes viral. Just do me a favor. Don't judge us on, on all the Teslas. Okay. Because that's getting a little too tr close to trip Tracy Boulevard and, what I love about the hurricanes this year is I see a lot of pickup trucks in the players' lot. Mm, I trip is also closely related to the CEO of Ford, so that might have something to do with it. Yeah. You know what? You know what didn't go viral? I didn't realize all these years later. You know what didn't go viral in Edmonton? Rafi Torres on this show. Yes, picked the Canucks to win. <laughs> And then was cranking the siren for the Oilers in an Oiler jersey like three games later. But so, Rafi sort of knew. He told us, yes. I'm going to Edmonton. He yeah. knew he had to play it a little politically. Yeah. He said, hey, I'm on a Vancouver show. I'll yeah. pick you got to consider the audience. Um, I have seen you've uh, done some reporting and commentary on this. But, uh, wow, the exit media session last week with Pedersen, Talkett, and Alvin. What did you make of it? Well, there's a lot to pick at, that's for sure. Um and I still don't really quite understand the Pedersen part of it. I mean, we could relitigate that if you want, but his his agent, who's also an attorney, was interestingly enough acknowledged that 
at no point in the playoffs did Elias Pettersson feel the need to even see a doctor. How how hurt was he? Mm -hmm. My my point was, and I've talked to multiple people about this since this came out. The Canucks are first off are not liars. Uh, second, they don't let people take bullets unnecessarily. They were, f I think, jaws on the ground floor to hear Pedersen try and blame part of his issues and play this second half of the season on the knee. Mm -hmm. Think about what it says about the team if if he actually was injured. Like, let's unpack it the other way, which is, so he practiced, he played, and then you told everyone that he wasn't hurt multiple times, in fact, and then now all of a sudden he, he was injured. I think they were really surprised to hear it. I think it was a cop out to the nth degree. And look, people had tweeted me back and said, oh, well, but he acknowledged that he was, quote, shit. Well, that's great, but then leave it at just that. So why is it okay the other way around for Philip Ronick to say, I'm not injured and I didn't play well? Mm -hmm. Yet that was more problematic to observers than Pedersen going the exact other way. Do you think it was the juxtaposition between PD and Hughes and Ronick and others not acknowledging anything that um, made some ripples with the Canucks as well? Yeah, but why... Like, why was one player getting more, more criticism than the other? It should have been the other way around. It should have been the other guy who wasn't really injured that wanted to blame it on an injury versus the guy that came out and said, hey, I, I'm, there was nothing wrong with me and I just didn't play well and I didn't. if I had an answer, I would have provided one for you. Mm. Yet, Phil Aronik got more criticism. Mm. Why is that? Was, what what's the thought process? I'm just like you. You take me inside well, your market. Uh, I I think. Uh, well, Philip Rogan was obviously Phil, injured. Everybody Phil, who had laid eyes on Phil him saw Bronick, him bandaged so, up. So and for him to so first of bold all, bold face, look people in the eye and say I was not injured. Everybody knows right, that's not the case. Right. So I I, I think. There but was he's saying honestly, no excuse. Like yeah, I, yeah, I, no, I I'm I not hurt. I, I honestly, Frank, I think this somewhat comes with the territory when you completely disavow media for the entire season. And so fans don't really feel like they know you all that much. Think you may be a bit of a mercenary, particularly when you hear of the contract uh, demands, or at least the contract expectations there. Plus, you know, he got really snippy with a couple of guys in local media. So, um, you know, I think it was out so of stop no. being butthurt. Like, uh, like no offense. Like, and, and you could say that to me about whatever you want. The like the second you as media walk into any press conference thinking that someone owes you something is the second you're getting it wrong. Well, but can you throw the why are you so butthurt at Ronick? Like why I, was he I, so I, insulted? Why by is he snippy? I mean, you could say that yeah. about any player that's snippy in any media interview. But he my point is when you my... follow it up with we're just trying to get you to answer questions because we left you alone all year. Well, like. I'm not pointing this at JPAT or any one person. You know, I love everyone in the Vancouver media core and they were so welcoming to me when I was there all playoffs. My point is that's on you first off for not continuing to go after that all season long. And second, he doesn't owe you anything. No one, no player, no executive, no coach owes you anything. That's how I view the media mm -hmm work in this field there's just yeah. sad there's just savvy veterans who know how to answer that question mm -hmm. who know how to say i'm not gonna i'm not gonna talk about my my health status uh that's not not an excuse for anything that I, that happened but uh, that's what he did he and did. it wasn't that wasn't acceptable no, to did. people he that's said no excuse me. i'm not hurt there's nothing wrong with me and i don't i can't explain my play um okay let's just move on because I think we got bigger. Uh, I'm just, I, 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 he, I think he was unnecessarily. He got defensive and stared down a reporter. Right. I think but let, but look at, so let's stop for a second though. Cause I know we'll move on after, but let's just compare the two things side by side. Why does one player creating an excuse out of the clear blue sky? Mm -hmm. Well, it's not that Frank, like nobody's doubting that he felt some knee pain, but 
your point stands. Canucks it's felt that he was the 15th or 17th most injured player on their roster. They told you that? That's what I believe. So Somebody there were players them. that played a, through a lot more than what Elias Pettersson did, who, again, his own agent came out this week and acknowledged publicly that he never saw a doctor. Mm -hmm. He said before the playoffs they saw a doctor, but not during. Okay, when did the Canucks... Mm -hmm. How long was their playoff run? A month? Yeah. 35 yeah. days? If that. To, to, to be no, fair, no, about, to be fair about right. there's a disassembly there, uh, Frank. The, the public perception is bizarre to me. Why does one player making an excuse get more leeway than a player who says there is none? Frank, but he one doesn't, point Frank. made. Let's move but, on to... But he the, doesn't. The, the Ronick story has been dead for weeks here. Uh, honestly, it lasted three days at a very high peak and then left. The only one that's enduring yeah. right now is the Pedersen question. Okay. So I I, okay. I I dispute that it's it's not the one that gets... But I, I was the one who... You know, I said what I said and it blew up and became a thing and that's fine. But it was just odd to me that one became something and the other one didn't. Okay. Um, point made. Let's move on to Rick Tockett's perception because sure. I think that's more important. How do you think hand, uh, How do you think Tockett handled the question on Pedersen and what do you think Tockett thought of Pedersen, Pedersen's disclosure? Um, can you just refresh me exactly on what he said? He said it's tendinitis and some said he, you know, some believe he said it kind of dismissively. I would think that almost universally, that's exactly how everyone handled it dismissively. I don't, I don't think Pedersen did himself any favors with his teammates, with the team, with anyone. That's just my personal opinion. That's not what Rick Tockett thinks. I don't know what Rick Tockett thinks. Mm -hmm. I'd love to inject some truth serum and find out. Um, but I think, Part of it is the real overarching clear takeaway story for me this summer for Pedersen is he, he seems to be his own worst enemy when things aren't going well. It's body language. It's frustration. He beats himself up and that I don't care about on ice time. I don't care about skill work and development and I don't care about fitness the biggest thing that Elias Pedersen should come back to Vancouver with in his arsenal and his toolbox in September is better mental preparation and, and better ways to handle what's thrown at you over the course of a long season. Yeah. Do you think that his attitude is wearing thin with the Canucks? I hope not. Cause they're about to embark on an eight year deal. Yeah. The well, with that, with that in, in franchise so, history, let me ask you a poll question we asked earlier in the week. Is there any piece of you that thinks we're going to hear about Pedersen in trade talk this summer? No. Zero percent. He's not going down Marner Boulevard, per se. Well, no, that's also one of the big parts about the Marner discussion that no one really, for whatever reason, seems to wrap their brain around is there's a big question staring them in the face. And the only one to answer right now is, are you extending Mitch Marner? Because you have to. Mm -hmm. And if you're not, then you got to trade him. So that's more the position in the contracts so, part rather than any dismay with the player per se. Well, there, there certainly is dismay with the player in, in Toronto. And that's the next secondary part of it, which is why you're not saying yes to the extension part. Right. But on Pedersen, I don't know that there's as much dismay. I think there's certainly questions in terms of his play in the playoffs. Um, but this is also a guy that, a few years ago in the bubble was lights out in the playoffs. Like where did that go? It can't just be that the game ramped up and left Pedersen behind. I don't believe that for one second. Well, somebody was just bringing it out on well, Twitter back, the other day about, about the, uh, the previous playoff performance of guys like Matthew Kachuk and even early playoff performances of, a Pavel Datsuk late twenties before they actually became of playoff performers. A lot of players, um, despite being superstars, mm -hmm. uh, you know, kind of in the regular season, you know, is it just a matter of time here for Elias Pettersson? I, I certainly think he's going to be much better for this in the long run. This is not easy. Some players take to it like a duck to water. Other players, you have to drag them in kicking and screaming and not saying that that's the way he wants it. But sometimes you know, baptism by fire is okay. Mm -hmm. um, the complication though, Frank, Frank is, um, you know, the no move kicks in next summer. 
The complication is that he just played the way that he did and he's embarking on an $11.6 million deal. And no one's touching that to... until they see more. Mm -hmm. Really? Would, I don't think so. Because Rutherford, Alvin, and Talkett basically have to decide this summer, is this a guy we can win a championship with? And I'm laughing because this is exactly the conversation we had with JT Miller 18 months ago. Yep. We've made that comparison as well. And mm -hmm. how did that work out? They're still chanting JT Miller. Yep. yep. Oh, we we reviewed uh, the reaction to the bull so for then, that trade when people were saying this should have been JT Miller that was traded. And God, did they ever make the right choice? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, bottom line is just Elias just needs to buck up, toughen up. It it's not all toughen up. Like there's a skill there's a skill to this. Just like you know, working hard is a skill. It's not. He needs. It's it's how you process and and manage these things from an internal perspective. There's a there's a there's a skill to it. You're not not everyone's just born with the mental acuity to do it. You you have to really you need a sports performance psychologist that's going to work through all this with him. Okay, we got lots of other stuff to get to. We got to move on here. Um, Martin Neches has come up on the radar mm -hmm. with the Canucks before, but now he's on everybody's radar because of, uh, well, you can tell us uh, a uh, a crossroads there with the Carolina Hurricane. So that's the unfortunate part is that, and this has nothing to do with the press conference for Philip Ronick. It has to do with the contract situation. Um, that would seem to be the only fodder for, the, for that to be uh, a trade for the Vancouver Canucks. Is that right? The contract part of it? I'm saying Philip Ronick would would be the only sort of fodder that I would think the Canucks are willing to part with if they are at all to get a guy like Martin HS in. I I don't get a sense that the Canucks are willing to part with Phil Ronick. I really don't. Um now the contract part is going to be fascinating on what happens there, but I I think that you'd have a really disappointed captain if that were the case, regardless of whatever um, regardless of whatever Patrick Alvin wants to say about him running his own pair, mm -hmm. I don't know how you, I just, how do you look Quinn Hughes in the eye afterward and say, we just traded the best partner you've had and had your best likely Norris trophy season with, I don't, I just don't, I still don't see it. I understand everyone's concerns about the contract. I get it. I hear you loud and clear. Every time I talk about the contract, I get all the tweets. I see them all. Um, also, these aren't my opinions. Like these are, this is market analysis of what we could actually see. Yep. And are the Canucks in on NHS? I, I would suspect that they would be. I would suspect that the Calgary Flames would be. I would suspect that a lot of teams are because they're all seeing the same thing. And speaking of the market, it's an inefficiency in the market in Carolina because Marty Natchez, who is a really talented player, you can pencil in right now for 25 goals and 55 to 60 points. He's doing that without opportunity, really. You've got Seth Jarvis and Andre Svechnikov ahead of him on the depth chart, which puts you immediately on power play two. I view Natchez as a 75 to 80 point player in this league, really without having to blink. And he wants more opportunity. He's hungry for it. And you're dealing with a Canes team that not only struggles to pay market price because that's just not their MO, but also because, well, why would you pay a real significant premium on a player who's your third line right wing? You can't in a cap environment. That's not how it works. So they've got a difficult decision to make. The only part of the calculus that I don't know yet, and no one does, is how does the next GM view this? And or has Tom Dundon, the owner, already made up his mind that Nate Chass is going to be a guy that's moving on? I have a whole fleet of questions about Dundon and why they don't pay market price, but uh, we're oh, over. listen, I, I'm not pandering here. I did a, uh, frankly speaking with no, Tom I know. London. I know. And it's one of the favorite podcasts I've ever done. You have mentioned that in the past. Uh, um, but fascinating and, guy. And needless to say, he's done a hell of a job there because when he took it over, it was one of the Satsock worst franchises 
in the league, and they Second have been in the league and win since then. Yeah, big so summer, though. Big summer, big summer, for, summer. Them, yeah. big um, summer for the Canucks. I'd say Hurricanes and Canucks are right there in terms no, of right. teams I'm you're watching right. for sure, for sure. Which uh, brings us to the Canucks UFA. So let's check them off here. Um, first, Lindholm um, was speaking in past tense last week uh, about enjoying my t- enjoyed my time here in Vancouver, all but assured that Lindholm is gone. I think they'd love to find a way to make something work. I just don't think that they're realistically going to be able to get there given the other things that they have to tackle first. Mm -hmm. Dakota Joshua, um, needless to say, has become an NHL player, is due some degree of raise. What do you suspect happens there? Another guy that they you love to have, but I don't know that you need to have. I think the priority on the Canucks front office would be how can we find the next Dakota Joshua and move on for years. The Boston Bruins have been a machine at producing fourth line players. Go look around the league. All the guys that have played there, they Mm -hmm. bring them in, they mold them, they stamp them, and then they watch them get paid somewhere else. Mm -hmm. That's what you have to do in your bottom six. Yep. Uh, Nikita Zadorov. Answer me the Phil Perona question first, and then I can give you the answer on Zadorov. Because if you're keeping Phil, I don't know how you can keep Zadorov or Zadorov. And then um, Myers on it, as we know, he's got specific family reasons. He wants to stay. I'd find. I'd. I'd strongly believe that there's a path to having that work out. And would you guess that begins with a two or three? The AAV on that. I think you can get creative with that and say, "Hey, we'll give you an extra year if you can keep it in the low twos." Oof. That would be unbelievable. Okay. Yep. Is that all? It's all going to be about total dollars. And at some point you don't bleep with happy Tyler Myers likes it. He's familiar. They like him. He's got the size that they crave. And maybe if you keep Myers, maybe that just makes it a little bit easier on the Zadorov end to say goodbye. Mm-hmm. Did anything uh, surprise you with the coaching um, carousel a bit here or with uh, Manny Malhotra coming in, Mike Gill coming out, any of that strike you with uh, any thoughts? Nope, not really. Yeah. Um, Mike Yo predated these guys. I, I get it. Has experience. I think fit in really well. And they were just like, we're okay. Yeah. And he's got options elsewhere closer to home. So. Hmm. All right. You enjoy those blue jean wearing Edmontonians. <laughs> Never going to hear the end of that, am I? And next time oh, you, you come here to Vancouver, we'll send a Tesla to pick you up at the airport, okay? <laughs> that would be nice. Thanks, Frank. See you guys. Uber Black. Hey, everybody. If you're enjoying what you're seeing here, then follow along with Secure Some Price on YouTube. I promise more content coming. They call it, the kids call it subscribe on YouTube. Well, how about liking it? Do that as well. Smash it right now.